thinking about where that piece of pottery is going to be placed and then its surroundings is really critical and I think that's the creative side of me. I am originally from Seagrove, North Carolina and still continue to live there. A common term for uh, what we do in our field is being a potter, making earthen vessels out of the clay. Well, I've been making pottery about 30 years now. I'm a dad, so I'm at this stage of my life right now, I'm, I'm being a, a scout leader to coaching basketball and coaching tennis. And Each one of my kids are creative in their own way. I grew up in a family, of, I've been a, a family of potters for several generations. I started out when I was about eight years old and just spent that time working with my granddad. He wanted me to wait till I was old enough. You make pottery, you can either sit down or stand up in the, in the process of doing it, but I had to be tall enough to be able to stand at his wheel because it was the way it was configured. My influences came through what, what he had taught me and what he had taught my dad and, and, and the business and the, what was a good, good quality product and you know what were the good skills you need to have. We use indigenous materials from our area. We actually own the property where we do obtain a lot of our materials from. Like any material, you have to, uh, you have to find good material to work with. So the land that we have, the clay there we take and uh, we found in certain specific deposits there. There are actually five different distinctive clays on that property. Our forefathers would go out and dig it with a pickaxe and a shovel. Some of the colors are more expressive because they're fired actually in a, a wood burning kiln. You have such a wide range of uh, colors and effects. It's kind of a, a recipe for success or disaster when it comes to making the pieces. So you become somewhat of a scientist as well as a, an artistic endeavor to kind of put these all these things together like a performance. It's all the things behind the scenes that end up showing the end product. I've worked on about four different Ritz-Carlton hotel projects in the last four or five years and one notably in Tokyo, Japan. And I was quite surprised they wanted to commission me to make it when there's such a history of pottery in Japan. Well, I've made pieces for a lot of different celebrities like James Taylor and Ronald Reagan and Bob Hope and Perry Como and different ones over the years. and. I think the next step is going to be is uh, changing as far as the scale of my work. Uh, some of the work I make is up to four to five feet tall now. You know, you think about it, well, it's only a foot taller, but uh, a lot of people don't understand when you go a foot taller, you also have to go wider to stay in proportion. And you can be a continuation of things in the past, but it's just with a little different light to it or a different way of wording it or a different way of, you know, a, a poet or a writer saying something or so it's uh, just a different way of expressing that I think that we build on that foundation. And I think patience is the biggest thing for success and teaching people out there, especially in clay, is you're not going to get there overnight.